Hello, my name is John Wright. I'm the band director at Northwood Temple Academy. I wanted to talk to you today about how to get good trombone tone quality, how to make a gorgeous sound on this instrument. First, I'm going to start off by demonstrating a bad sound that you may or may not have heard before. I'm going to get this sound by using just a very little bit of air. I'm going to close off my throat. I'm going to pinch my lips together. I'm going to have my teeth closed together. My tongue is going to be at the top part of my mouth, going to like this. It's a nasty, nasty sound that's totally unnecessary. Uh, the way I'm going to fix that is I'm going to breathe in. I'm going to get a lot of air because your lips need a lot of air to work with. The more uh, uh, air to make those lips vibrate, the more of a resonant sound. So I'm going to breathe in not by constricting my rib cage and making my air uh, capacity smaller. I'm going to just push out my belly button and I'm going to go like that by pushing out and just just fills up automatically. And I want to relax my throat and have just an open sound like I'm yawning. And I'm going to spread my teeth and lips farther than you think you should. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put my thumb between my teeth. That's how far apart it needs to be. And I'm going to have my lips apart. You don't have to pinch your lips together because, uh, as a matter of fact, inside the mouthpiece, my lips will be about that far apart. It, when you start to put that air through, it creates this low uh, pressure that sucks your lips, the soft tissue of your lips, into that airstream, and it'll buzz together. You don't have to mash them together. It will just get pulled in together. For instance, it's all spread apart. Here's bad. Did you hear, did you see me pull my teeth and, and lips apart? Here's the bad. begin each note with the tongue, da 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 or ta ta ta, and I drop my tongue out of the way. While I'm going for high notes, yes, I will arc the back of my tongue like Mr. Arben said in his famous trumpet method book, but uh, like ta -ya. So I'll, I'll do that, yes, but I'm not arcing, I'm not raising up the front part of my t tongue like because that kind of just cuts off the air. It's only the back, the ta -e So I'm demonstrating all this on, this is my first trombone that I got in 1972. We bought it used. Uh, it was 40 years ago when I got it. And uh, it's a, a, a wonderful instrument. And a lot of trombone players I've seen go to all district band, honors band, just on a student trombone, but they've learned the secret of how to play with good tone. So, you have to learn to tongue each note to place the note. Da, 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 da. And um, so you have to be careful. Now, a small bore instrument like this, you do have to be careful to, to carefully tongue and give a correct balance of air to tongue. Da, 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 a burst of air with each tongue. And you can't, sometimes if you're playing real loud, it's easy to get a splatty sound on a small bore instrument or a student trombone like this. Um, more about that later. Some band directors say, well, let's, let's get you, have a, we need to get you have it with a better tone quality, so we're going to uh, get you a, a step up instrument. Well, Here's a step-up instrument right here that my wonderful mom got for me in the eighth grade. But notice the tubing is about the same size, and it won't matter. Uh, it won't, it, you know, it's a great instrument, wonderful slide, and a slide is the heart of a trombone. You want to make sure, you don't want to just order a trombone online. You want to make sure you play that instrument, make sure you can get that slide working. Put some tuning slide, I mean, not tuning slide, but, but slide cream on the slide and some water, and make sure that you can get that slide operating silently. Uh, if not, you don't want to be fighting against a slide. But if this tubing is the same size, it's not going to really help us as far as tone quality goes. Sure, we got a nice little F attachment here. We can play our C in sixth position up in first with the trigger, or a B natural instead of way out in seventh. We can now play it in second and a half. But other than that, 
It's just a really nice horn. It's great for jazz, great for popping out some high notes, and you can get an orchestral sound, a quasi-orchestral sound, pretty close to it uh, with this. <laughs> If you've got to really pop out a lot of high notes for a long period of time, this is a great instrument to have. You know, a small uh, bore size and all that like that, but and it doesn't take as much air. But um, as far as tone quality, your tone quality won't improve with this instrument because it's the same bore size. This is just a student uh, small bore, small shank size mouthpiece. It won't change that much until you go to a large bore instrument. This is one that I, my, my mother, once again, got me when I went to East Carolina to, to major in music and, uh, and I was a bass trombone major. But, um, you know, it, this is it's a large bore instrument. You want to look for, if you are going to get a, a step up instrument or a nice trombone, I'd say get a professional size instrument, a large bore instrument, and the, it'll say bore size 0.574 or something like that. And uh, it'll be a large bore instrument and of course you want to play it first to make sure it's going to sound good. Some places you, you can play it and then send it back. That's okay. That's cool. Um, but still though, even though you got, it, it has more of a resonant sound. I'm not sure how well the microphone's picking up the difference. Uh, there's a slight difference between this one and that one. But the main thing is that you make sure that you're playing with a uh, spread teeth, spread lips, open rich sound, warm air coming through, relaxed sound. <laughs> Playing with just a regular, uh, to play tenor trombone on a bass trombone, I just use a six and a half AL mouthpiece. Uh, that's in the, the Bach and Benj uh, sizings for mouthpieces. But uh, when I play bass trombone stuff, I use like a one and a quarter GM with the backboard drilled out. That's a big mouthpiece, and it's great for playing like tuba range notes. But uh, for when I'm playing tenor trombone parts, you know, higher stuff like that, I'll use just a regular tenor trombone mouthpiece with a large shank so it'll fit the, the tubing here, and I get a really nice sound. Uh, you, some guys would say, well, I just want to get a big old bass trombone sound. This is a ten and a half inch bell. I mean, it's, it's big, but it's heavy. The best case scenario is if you want to play tenor trombone, get a professional large bore size tenor trombone and uh, or whatever you buy make sure it's a large bore if you're going for better tone quality and uh, uh, one other thing that I want to mention uh, if you're in high school having to do marching band or maybe you like to do marching band uh, and you take your trombone slide out there and all and, and there's tremendous amounts of dust that you may not be able to see and when you extend that slide all that dust falls on that slide and it acts like a little sandpaper and it'll start to eat away the plating right there and it grinds away at it and it can ruin a trombone slide really really quickly and uh, I had to have this trombone slide I used it in marching band for years and it, it really took a toll on it. Uh, learn the tuning tendencies of your instrument. Uh, go to the music store get yourself a $20 little tuner and make sure the calibration doesn't get bumped into where you make sure it says 440, A440 in the top corner but learn the tuning tendencies of your instrument to where if you get there and you get warmed up, you know, if I, I'm warmed up and I put my tuning slide right about here, I'm going to be in tune when I play. And, and it also helps you to discover the exact places of like, for instance, when you're playing an F to an E natural, that second position, E natural, is real close. It's like only an inch of the silver slide showing. But if you're going B flat C, D flat, that's much lower. It's about an inch lower. Second position, there's like a, there's two different second positions, really. And there's other things like that, other tuning tendencies like that on the trombone. It also depends on what chord you're playing, what part of the chord you're playing. You always want to listen down to the tuba. but you And you've got this wonderful tuning slide right here in your hand. So you, you always want to listen and, and tune. But uh, learn the tuning tendencies of your instrument to where if you, you, you know where everything's at so that when you get into a large ensemble, they don't have to tune you up. They don't have to worry about you. You're going to be in tune. You're going to be listening, and you're going to nail it. And you, when you do play, it's going to be just this breathtaking, wonderful, rich sound. Everybody's like, wow. And that's the sound that you want. That only comes by 
a, a relaxed air passageway, open throat, sp spread teeth that far apart, teeth, lips that are not touching. You don't want to mash them together. They'll be that far apart when you put the mouthpiece out to your mouth. So get a rich sound, drop your tongue out of the way. Da, And uh, people will want to hear you play. And so I hope all this has been helpful for you. I said a whole lot, but hopefully you're able to get it.